this could be possibly finished. No way. I might just reduce our contrast a little bit, maybe warm it. I just don't know how you would not use this. Pull down some of the highlights. It's looking pretty nice to me. What's up, everybody? It's been a while. I've been doing a lot of testing in Resolve and um, want to share that with you. So first, let's set up Resolve. If you go into general, this used to not be the case, but you want this box to be checked. Use Mac Display Color Profiles for viewers. Once you do that setting once, you won't need to change it again when you reopen Resolve. This setting, you have to change it every time. This is the default on the M1s and M2s. Change this to Rec 709A and output color space to same as timeline. I'm also going to change the LUTs to be tetrahedral. So I will put a color space transform on here. This is airy footage, so I'm going to transform this to 709. And I'm going to put a node before this for our HDR adjustments. And I am going to map the HDR wheels to the proper color space and gamma. This is the way to change exposure in Resolve if you want it to match what it would look like if the camera had more light hitting the sensor. Bring up our exposure a little bit here. Something else that you could consider doing is focusing a little more on the talent. I'm clicking Shift H so I can see where this is affecting. Bring him up a little bit or switch this so it's affecting out here and bring down the rest. Let's take a look at how you can turn this just as easily as I turned it into Rec. 709 into a nicer looking image in just about the same amount of time. Let's take a look at Dehancer. If you're unfamiliar, Dehancer is a film emulation plugin. I am going to make a new version, remove our Rec. 709 transformation, but I'm gonna keep our HDR adjustment. So this is our version one and version two, I'm going to add Dehancer. I am going to select what camera we used, which is the Alexa. I will handle the grain, change this to positive and put the amount all the way down. And we see our Rec. 709 and with Dehancer with only the grain adjusted. So I'm gonna go through and set this up to give me a look that I like. One thing that I also like to do is just turn off the film and go down to the print move it to Kodak 2383. It's looking a little too blue. So this was shot in Airy Raw at 2590. I'm just gonna warm this up just a little bit. This is off camera with just a Rec. 709 transform and an exposure adjustment. And this is the look that we made very quickly with Dehancer. So here's the next clip. I will just bring up this exposure a little bit. So we have Rec. 709 and Dehancer. This is a scenario where I find that I kind of would like something in between. So this would be a good time to get an in-between look by making the 709 transform not happen in Dehancer, but happen before Dehancer. So we'll add a color space transform again and go from log to 709 and move Dehancer to just be accepting 709 footage. So this is our 709 transform, and this is with Dehancer on top of it. Let's turn Dehancer down a little bit. So I'm gonna go to the output, and just turn it down a touch. Let's just go halfway. 709, halfway on Dehancer. This is looking good. I'm gonna add a version four that has Dehancer turned all the way on. This is our Rec. 709. This is with Dehancer turned all the way on, and this is with it half on. This is the winner for me here. Same thing here. It's just a touch of the look. This is a good one. Going back to our HDR wheels, let's just say this is looking too hot for you. This is the log image, far from clipping here. So I'm gonna take our highlights in the mapped HDR wheels. I'm just gonna bring down our highlights and I'm only looking at the scopes and that I truly love. When the HDR wheels came to resolve and I started working like this, changed my life. I'm gonna turn that off and in Dehancer, you can also use film compression, which brings them down as well. Film compression, the HDR wheel, Rec. 709, and with our Dehancer. And remember, we're not even using the film look. So if we turn that on, that's where we get a little bit like even further, which I think if you go too far, it may not help you. You just need a little something. And for something like this, let's say we want it to have more of a film look. I like the pro image and I might bring up this, bring up saturation a little. And we go from 709 to this look. The possibilities are literally endless. 
This was from a location scout for a film that I am shooting this spring. There is nothing about this that is correctly done, besides the fact that we were looking at ways to potentially frame up scenes in the movie. I'm going to start from scratch here. I'm going to move this to 709 and put our HDR mapped wheels. Let's just make the Rec 709 look better. I want a little bit of a darker look for this, but a lot of the house lights were on, so we're looking very warm. So let's cool it down, and I'm going to lower the saturation on this. Maybe pull up the gamma just a touch. And I'm going to add Dehancer. I mean, just with not even touching anything, this looks a little bit more like a movie. Let's turn this off and just put the print, 709, with the print. 709, just the print. Now the house lights are off. So I'm gonna go back and remove our temperature adjustments. Let's bring just a little magenta in and cool it down and still turn our saturation down a little bit. 709, yikes. Quick moves in Dehancer. This looks a little too desaturated. So I'm just gonna reset this node entirely. See what we can do here. This looks better. 709 with the look working in two nodes here to get an image like this that hasn't been lit that there was no control over we didn't get proper exposure and we completely butchered the color temperature with or without dehancer these are very simple moves so let's make a new version here and see what we can do without dehancer let's add some grain so the grain helps a little bit move this transformation from log to 709 to log to Cineon. And then I'm gonna add this LUT, it's built into Resolve, it's free. I'm gonna go down here to the 709 2383D60. So we have our Dehancer look, just some grain, and then this is converted to Cineon and then using a LUT that's built into Resolve. So let's uh, turn this down a little bit, turn the exposure down a little bit, built into Resolve. Dehancer. Dehancer has a richer look to it, but remember in Dehancer, we don't even have the film profile selected. And we are just using the defaults for all of these besides the film grain. And we could take it much further. So we can put the film look on. I'm going to bring up our exposure a little bit. And now we have a nice stylized look here. Let's take a look at a different technique. Before the 709, I'll just go into the curves. I'm going to bring up the shadows. I'm only looking at the scopes here and this looks good so after that i'm going to adjust our temp and tint let's just use the automatic selection and i'm going to select this as white then we can add dehancer that's a lot so let's see what these curves do if we bring them up even more so that's looking pretty good and we could even before our 709 transform bring down this window a little bit I'm going to feather this out, and let's just bring it down in the curves. Let's just add a little bit of saturation in here, maybe warm it a touch. So this is off camera. This is a Rec. 709 transform, and this is the look that we've developed. This is a different shot. We're outside. We'll move this to Rec. 709. Add our HDR mapping, and let's toss Dehancer on here. Default Dehancer. Rec. 709, no way. This could be possibly finished. I like to turn this off, just put the print on. This could possibly be finished as well. I kind of think our exposure is fine. I might just reduce our contrast a little bit, maybe warm it, pull down some of the highlights. It's looking pretty nice to me. And if we keep all those changes we made and turned off Dehancer, going from this to this would require a lot of work. And I'm not against doing a lot of work, but I just don't know how you would not use this. This color warper is great because you can just pick it on the screen and move it around. It's like unbelievable. Sorry, Corey, put you back. Select these blues and a little more cyan. I think that looks good. Uh, let's keep moving. This is a previous look that we made. We'll just go through it real quick. Off of camera, 709 transform. Bring down the highlights a little bit in the curves. A temperature adjustment and a contrast adjustment. Nothing in the HDR. And three, two, one. Unreal. Okay, let's see if we have any other clips. 
Uh, let's just say we like this look and we want to stick with this. There's more that you can do to make the footage look better. So if this was the opening shot to our movie and we want it to go even a little bit further, but we liked how the grade looks, something that we can consider doing is messing with the edges a little bit. I'm gonna move over into the edit. I'm gonna go to lens correction. There's a little barrel distortion, which I actually like, but I'm gonna add a little more so we can see this turned off and on. And in After Effects, I think for this specific effect, you can do a little bit better of a job because you can affect the middle a little bit less and kind of just touch the edges a little bit more. But let's say that that's going to work. And then I'm going to go in and add this correction before everything because this would be something that would happen in the lens. I am going to add a radial blur and see what that looks like. I am going to use power window and invert it and I'm gonna hit shift H so I can kind of see what I'm working with right here I'm gonna bring this up and fade this out and sometimes when I do this I actually don't let it touch the top or bottom just the edges which is kind of how a lens will actually affect an image let's just start out here where we can see it everywhere and then we'll make adjustment if needed so this might be good too much I'm going to feather this even more and make this bigger and let's see so we have a little bit of wonkiness on the edges here i'm gonna turn this off and go to let's do lens blur wow this actually really does look like lens blur i'm gonna add a new power window from scratch just get this to a point and you want to like feather it heavily i think like this isn't horrible this kind of looks like you're looking through something but I'm gonna feather it out more. And this definitely has the sense that it's the lens doing this. And we can also see what it looks like if it comes into the frame. I'd say this is a little too much. So one thing we could do, I do this all the time when I make color adjustments, I will turn down the gain a little bit if what you think you did is too much. You could just turn down the blur, but sometimes it feels like you have more control here. So this is cool. This looks like a lens effect. At the end, we could go and add a glow. You can see right off the bat what that glow does up here. And I might change the threshold so that it just glows ever so slightly. And then before our 709 transform, I am going to highlight in here a little more with a power window, just because it looks a little dark in there. It seems clear to me that something's going to be going on in this house, and it looks really dark right here, and we have the information there. So usually I bring up exposure here in different ways, but let's just try the gamma. Maybe I'll just feather it off a little and bring down the shadows just a touch just because we brought up the gamma which brought up the shadows a little so that is looking good and again maybe i might just bring this down just a touch we can add one more let's clean up this node graph still before our 709 and i just want to bring down the edges so i'm going to bring it down bring down the gamma feather it out and this looks more like we're creeping in at the house. A little hot on the highlights here. So I'm going to go into our HDR and I'm going to bring down our highlight just so it's not clipping. So now this is no longer clipping. Brought it down just a touch. Rec 709, HDR adjustment, contrast and color temperature. This brings down the highlights in the curves a little bit. Power window on the front of the cabin. Or vignette, blur, glow. So we have everything on and then we just have our dehancer to bring it all together. And then from there, if you wanted, we could put our film look. And in this case, I may bring down our contrast a little more. And we have, this is just with the print. And then this is with the film look, a little more eerie. Let's go back in and ectochrome. So this is with ectochrome with no film look. You get the idea. This is a scenario where I don't think film compression is useful because it's very flat in the sky and this kind of just flattens it out even more and we're not like anywhere near clipping so we get like more definition in the clouds here. And then let's see what we can get without Dehancer. And this time I am going to put another color space transform from 709 to Cineon and then add the built-in LUT. And then I'm gonna pop some grain on here and in our HDR, I'm just gonna lower our exposure a little bit in the global. So we have built into resolve in the subway. Again, I might add this lens blur, invert this, 
maybe bring it in even more. It's a cool move that you can make. It kind of makes it a little more interesting. Same thing here. No lens blur, lens blur. Maybe we'll end on this clip. We got to get out of here soon. It's getting late and my butt hurts from sitting in this little mini chair. We'll start from scratch. Convert this to 709. Wicked Dark. We're going to bring up our exposure a lot. Let's just crank this exposure. I don't know if that's salvageable. I don't know what was going on here. This is insanely noisy. Try noise reduction. Okay, maybe. I'm going to bring up our shadows a little bit. And just adjust our color temperature. Green sometimes does really look good, adding green to some shots. Just added a little bit of green to here. And you can see in the scopes right here on this wall, which is white, there's a little bit of green peeking through. And I'm a little looking too saturated, which might be the light coming from my phone. So I'm gonna turn down the saturation a touch. And we're looking at something like this. Still think it could use Dehancer. And that's an improvement. And as always, let's turn this off and turn the print to Kodak. Once again, Dehancer, working some magic. All right, so I am spent on this. Hopefully you learned some things in there. While Dehancer is not the only way to do it, it's an extremely valuable piece of the puzzle that is like a no-brainer if you're running any footage through DaVinci Resolve. You can go to a really crazy look or you can really have it be subtle like what we were looking at today. There's been certain looks that I've been building for years for certain cameras that I use a lot of times for a starting point, but it blew my mind when I hopped back into Dehancer with their recent update with the print film look and the film compression. It's crazy how like quick you can get a really nice looking image from this plugin. It's almost a miracle to me.